Well, good morning and welcome everybody to the Trigger Charts pre-market rundown for September 18th, 2020. Hopefully you're having a great week. You're having a profitable week. There's been a lot of volatility in the markets this week. And one of the things that we know is that if you're a trader, a day trader, swing trader, intraday trader, opportunities are abound right now with this volatility we're seeing. I'm Andrew Horowitz. I'm one of the co-founders of TriggerCharts.com and all of the indicators that we build on the TradeStation trading app store platform. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to check those out. I want to mention before we begin, of course, that this is not a recommendation to buy or sell any security. There is no discussion about what you should do, what you shouldn't do. All we're doing is providing some educational services here with these Friday updates and maybe giving you some insights, ideas, and uh, will then take you to the next stage of your research, availing you to the opportunity to make some money. And I will tell you, that I, I, I can tell you all the time because I'm really proud of this. And that is that we are getting some great reviews, people writing us about how they're making money, how they're doing things, and the success that they're having every day utilizing our indicators. And more important, I think, than just the success of making money, I've gotten some really cool emails this week that people are talking about how it helped them not make the wrong move. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, when we have a situation where, like, oh, should I do this? Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I won't do this. Ah, the hell with it. I'm going to do it because I feel like I need to trade. Well, our programs, our indicators, help you stay on the right side of the trade. And I think that's probably one of the more important things that really we can offer because that gives you the opportunity to stay away from errors. And the more we make good decisions in terms of our trading, the opportunities to actually have money that makes money but not take those big losses even if those trades and those money the money that you're making is in um in in small increments as long as we stay away from those big losses things are good so all right let's close this down let's take a look like a, a look to the right hand part of our screen here uh we're going to talk about a few things before we do that i want to just put a poll up because i'm kind of curious every month or so I want to find out kind of where we are with the thought of where the virus is going. So the virus, uh, the, the poll today is, uh, when will you travel by plane or cruise again? And it goes from now through not for a very long time. So get those in there and we'll tell you what everybody's thinking about that and uh, kind of get a, a sense of the audience, if you will. All right, so where are we? Uh, the Fed, the Fed, the Fed. The Fed definitely did some work this week. It looked like initially they were going to really provide some very exciting and bullish commentary from a dovish stance because they did something. Well, they pushed the interest rate, zero interest rate protocol, a program, ZERP, out to 2023, saying that, you know, we don't think the economy is going to be able to get to where we want it to be. Not until at least 2022, which we had targeted just a couple of months ago, but now they're pushing it to 223, 2023. That's interesting because on first you would say, wow, they're going to maintain a, a enormously accommodative posture until 2023. So that should be pretty good for markets because markets like the excess liquidity, the low interest rates. They like the fact that there's quantitative easing. And all of a sudden, markets did pop on that initial discussion. But when they didn't have any clarification about the quantitative easing, and more importantly, I think the realization set in, it was like, hmm, wait a minute. Uh, I thought we were on a trajectory to have a V recovery, and this is going to work. And with all the fiscal stimulus that we have and all the monetary stimulus, I thought we were going to be done with this in like, I don't know, mid to end of 2021, right? That's what everybody was thinking. And now all of a sudden, with them coming out with their estimate of keeping interest rates at the lower bound until 2023. I think people got a little bit spooked by that. Um, the healing continues in terms of economics, where we are seeing that slowly but surely some of the numbers in the manufacturing area, as well as some of the durable goods that are coming out this morning, uh, as well as a few of the other numbers, are starting to get a little bit better from that deep, deep, deep sell-off. We see that the estimate for GDP this year will be about a negative 5% overall for the whole entire year. That's what the latest is coming in from the IMF and a few other uh, OECDs and uh, there's some other analysts that are putting that out there. I will share with you, though, that, that there is a need for fiscal support, the opportunity for us to continue with this recovery, not only here in the U.S., but around the world, is really contingent on the fact that we have, yes, monetary policy is accommodative, but I think more so it's the idea that we have a fiscal policy that will provide for areas. And I was at a meeting yesterday, a really interesting meeting yesterday, where 
we were talking about the restaurant and the leisure and the entertainment industry. And the fact is that they're suffering. We're so seeing 30, 40 percent of restaurants potentially going to be closing. And that is as of right now, if this continues where we have the continuation of bars not being open in certain areas because of the fear of the spread and whether you're not whether you believe that there is this conspiracy to keep things closed until the election or you're thinking hey you know what this makes sense because we don't want any more of this pandemic to spread whatever your thoughts are on it the fact is we are at a situation where it is vital for something to happen and we're getting to uh, i would say a, a a a point in the road that we need to figure out what to do with this either if they're going to stay closed have more support from a fiscal standpoint uh, or if they're going to open, well, how is that going to look? I mean, right now, at the end of this month, New York City is going to be opening up their restaurants by um, for 25% indoor dining September 30th. It's starting to get cold. That means this, if that means if 25% indoor, they're going to lose a lot of the outdoor business, and that may not change anything dramatically. So just something right there. Let's get to the poll here. Let's end this, and let me tell you what the numbers are. So when will you fly by plane or cruise again? 21% of you said, well, right now. I should probably split this up by plane or, and cruises because I think there's a difference. I'm not sure about that. I think people are probably much more uh, reluctant to go on a cruise possibly than they are a plane. But anyway, uh, one to three months is uh, 7%. Three to six months is 36%. The winning poll number is six to 12 months with 43%. And not for a long time is 7%. So pretty interesting numbers there. Yeah, that's what people are saying. Plane okay, no cruise, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. No buffets. No buffets. That is a real, that's a travesty. Seriously. Um, all right, let's look at this. Tech under pressure. On the right-hand side of our chart right here, what we have is the Qs, the NASDAQ 100. By the way, we're seeing that there's a nice uptick, and this seems to be the way that we see things throughout the day recently. We see the uptick right in the early part of the morning. Uh, moving down in the futures probably about 2 a.m. or turn on the upside about 2 a.m. when the European markets start to open. And then we see it kind of follow through into the morning. Then usually on the bell, we get that Pavlovian response where there is uh, the bell goes off and people hit the buy button. And then we kind of fade out into the middle of the day with nothing. And then the final resolution starting at about 1 to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, right now, I think that there is an opportunity for us to finish the week strong. Uh, there is, we're coming off two weeks of losses, and I think there is the desire to kind of go into the weekend, kind of clean things up, nothing major on the up or down. There's not a lot of news coming out. We're getting closer to the election. Right now, there are levels of support that are really important. First of all, let's look at the cues on the right-hand side here, like I mentioned. And let me draw a few things here. We, we looked at the level, uh, this 273.08 level for a while and said, you know, if you don't hold that, you got a real problem. Tried to hold that and then kind of broke down yesterday. Did come off the bottom a little bit. There, I don't think there's any magic to the current level that we're at right now. You know, right there, uh, we see that there was a prior support that was very significant and our altimeter drew a three-line level of support resistance and high value node, if you will, or uh, the point of control. And with that, you have to look at this and say, well, um, we did successfully kind of bounce off of that. We're below the 50-day. We did get through that. You know, where are we going from here? I think you can have a trouble, you know, give or take at the 271, 272 level. Right now, 273.04 is a midterm. And I think that probably, uh, if you look at this, I want to show you something really interesting. Remember, we drew, we drew this line some time ago. But look what's happening here. We have another right underneath here. You see this right here? Do you see that? Underneath is another high volume mark right where we drew our line. That line has not changed. I haven't touched it in, in, in weeks. Since we st started getting back here and said this is where the level is going to be, even when we went up and we kind of drove all the way higher, I drew this line. I, I wish there would be a date stamp on there. I don't think you can put a date stamp on there. Maybe on the label. Um, but bottom line is at 273.08, look at that. 273.04 is the line that is the significant point of control right now. That means that we are approaching that on the pre-market at 272.64, but I still think that there's a lot of work to do on the downside potentially here. You would look at this and this straight shot up with a lot, you know, when we look from right to left that I talk to you about all the time, this whole idea of simply, you know, looking from right to left and, and always look at the, There's not a lot in these regions. You know, right here is, is kind of um, an empty hole, I would call it. And we can talk about that a little bit later uh, with this. So. Let's clear that. Um, 
So we did see a lot of IPOs, the Snowflake IPO, which uh, pulled money in and away from other areas of the market, I think was something very important. I think that that Snowflake IPO, the biggest IPO in history that went opened at 120, or actually was priced at 120, opened at about 240, shot up to about 311, came back down yesterday significantly. Probably going to see a lot of interest in that from a trading standpoint. A little bit of an expensive stock. Not everybody likes to trade the expensive stocks, that, you know, over $100, $200, uh, but it's going to be something of interest. A lot of supply in the markets right now. There's several different IPOs coming. We have SPACs that are all over the place. So we're starting to see that there is this movement of money. And because of what we saw with the Fed when they talked about this and that the um, on their news, as interesting as this may have seemed, interest rates actually went up. That did favor some of the value plays, the banks, which are just absolutely just destroyed this year uh, in some other areas. I, I would really consider watching um, the value side of things and maybe the banks just to see if there's an opportunity that should be arising. Uh, if, in fact, we have a continuation of this yield curve wi uh, widening. Election is, I don't know, 45 days or so away. It looks like uh, we're going to have this debate. Unfortunately, Joe Biden declined to go on the Joe Rogan show. <laughs> President Trump thought it would be good. I think there was a concern that would break the Internet from all parties if that actually happened. Um, you know, I don't know how they would handle it. But seriously, uh, you know, unfortunately, we're not going to have your normal election cycle here. And a big question as to whether or not it's ever going to really resolve, uh, especially with the whole mail-in ballot debate going on. Economics, retail sales, plus six, missed, plus 0.6, missed expectations this week. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with the unemployment compensation that we did not have in the markets recently. Remember that uh, we had $600 per week for a while, then it just stopped dead. And then people started slowly but surely getting their $300 per week, those that were qualified. The housing market is on fire. I mean, on fire. It has been a great market uh, for certain areas as this de-urbanization trend continues. And as we're seeing the single family homes do well. There was a report out yesterday that showed that single family homes continue to do well. Multifamily homes, I think it was a drop of like 21% of activity in the new buys and builds in that area. So that's something to watch. Um, I mentioned um, the initial claims and the unemployment numbers, still over 800,000, not good. And uh, the FOMC rate decision on, on, on Wednesday, really not much going on. University of Michigan, probably happening this morning. Anytime, maybe it was a good number. We're seeing that the future is starting to tick a little bit higher here. We're gonna look at a couple of different movers and what's going on. Um, and I wanted to look at the, the uh, KRI here for a second. So you notice this KRI, this KRI indicator, uh, it is available in the trading app store. You have to have a couple of things. You have to have um, certain feeds to actually make this work and it only works for one symbol only and that's SPY. All the information is in the instruction manual. If you want to download it, you can check it out. Um, somebody's asking, oh, what does SPACs mean? <laughs> okay, uh, SPAC. Uh, SPACs, Special Purpose Acquisition Vehicles, uh, or companies. Uh, the, those are uh, the new thing. Check it out. Go look at that. Uh, if you haven't heard of SPACs, they're pretty hot right now. There's a few of them we're going to talk about today. I think we'll have that in there. Uh, but the equilibrium right now for markets is in play. That means that we uh, really have no sense of directionality. I will tell you that we're coming off a very nice move, uh, you know, kind of a smooth up above the zero line for some time now. And we're starting to see a little bit of a breakdown into uh, kind of a sloppy action at this point. What's interesting, if you look at this, you know, you're seeing there's an interesting baseline that's kind of forming here, uh, you know, right about those levels that we saw before the break and the breakup in August. It looks like the market wants to possibly take back some of that. A little bit of a head and shoulders if you want to play it. You got the kind of shoulder here, head up top here. I guess we could draw this. Uh, a little bit of shoulder here, head here, well, head here, and a little bit of shoulder right there. Usually what we do is take the measurement, you know, of the neckline, probably somewhere around here. I wouldn't be surprised if we kind of get back to the level we were back to July. Take the, 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 the neckline move to the base and then just uh, add it back down. This is unscientific the way I just drew it, but that gives you a good idea of what it looks like. All right, getting back to, where were we? Where were we here? All right. So also, uh, if you want, oh, here we have a couple of things here. Uh, I'll put this down the bottom. If it, it probably is not going to work over here, but I'll put it. So we, N -NOX, somebody's asking me, N-N-N-N-O-X. Uh, we'll put that in there. 
recent IPO. Another one. This is uh, Nano X Imaging. Opened up yesterday at 25. There's not much we can go on here. Uh, IPOs, there's not enough data for anybody to really analyze, but it went up from, look at this, 25, went up to 66, dropped all the way down, and there you are. This is on a weekly basis. Let's see daily, what we got here. Yeah, it's just not enough to really look at here. Um, here's my rule on IPOs, though, and what I think about. This is a little bit different. This is a little bit out of the box. I just want to share that with you. When you look at IPOs, what I like to look at is when you see these spikes up and the move downs, okay? That's what we have exactly here. It's a good one to look at. What I like to do is I like to find out where that level was where they took off. So when this particular one that we're looking at right now, I guess we could say it was kind of right above in this range, right above what, 40, we kind of stretch that, uh, kind of about $45. Now, that's pretty far from where we are right now. But what you may see is the opportunity if you get above that level. And I'll even say that maybe this is going to be an interim level also at about 36 level. Once you get above, back above that, you get the flush out of the people that are selling off the initial buy. You're getting the opportunity for those people that maybe bought a little bit higher and want to get out and saw this opportunity kind of fade away from them, that they get out. And once you get that clearing, you know, kind of above those levels, that's where I like to put my money in on IPO. So what you could do is put an alert, just simply put an alert on your trade station platform for a price and look to buy it when it gets above that level. You know, yes, you may say, well, why wouldn't I buy it now then? If it, I don't know if it's going to go above that. I don't know if it's going to stay here forever. You know, is this thing just going to simply plot along, you know, in this kind of level here? Is it going to come back up and then flatten out for a while and not do anything? Or, you know, it, but, but what I'd really like to see, I'll tell you what the real pattern is, let it kind of stay in this pattern for a while, like, you know, up to here, and then break. It doesn't have to be totally vertical. Once you get that above the level that we saw that there was that prior move to the upside, that's something I'd like to see. i like to see these things settle out a little bit before I get too dramatically involved with them. And, and I'm not a really big fan because we don't have a lot of data on these. All right, so that was, let's see if there's anything else in here. Uh, oh, oh, at the bottom. Yeah, put your, I'm going to put a, in the chat here, I'm going to put here on the bottom, uh, put your information about that. I'll also mention anybody that gets the Commander series that we're looking at right now with the addition of the Aileron, which is our momentum and trend indicator, uh, that's an addition. But if you get just the Commander series, if you sign up and you become a customer of ours, and we're here for support and all that, you will also get a $199 value. So you're paying $149 for a month, getting $199 value. You get a four-hour coaching session online. Do it your leisure. It's all there available. We did this a while back to set up what we consider to be um, kind of an evergreen style training. So if you have access to this, if you have this installed, uh, you can write, and, and you recently uh, put this on and you're a paying customer, you can reach out to support at triggercharge.com. I think it's all in there. Uh, reach out to support at triggercharge.com. Also, add your symbols right there. Let's see what we're going to look at. I'm going to look at Workhorse for a second. This has been interesting. Um, what I really like about this pattern, it's very clean. We saw a great amount of support once it broke. Obviously, it broke in June from, uh, let's kind of go back here a little bit. This was a SPAC, I believe. Uh, no, this was not a SPAC, I don't think. Um, this broke, of course, from three. There was some realization of them in the car business. It held the 15 level, broke to the top, and again, this is very similar to what I talked about a moment ago about the IPOs. Once you get that rip, think about that rip, and then that takedown again, you know, you couldn't get below that 1550 level, it didn't seem. We got multiple lines, and like I tell you all the time, let's just draw a simple line here. Look at that. That line shows us, well, we can't get below that. I will take my opportunity that if we launch off of that, that's a great plan of action to say alongside. Well, we did get a call. We got the, the clear signal here. Back about 15, what are we calling this? Uh, 15, uh, 1590. Uh, got that break on the upside, and now it's trading at 28, all green, all the way. A little bit of choppiness in there. We change up our time frame. We look at weeklies here, for example. Recently got a weekly call, too, at 22, now trading at 2870. It looks a little overextended to me, a little bit, to be honest with you. I think that you have the opportunity, if you look at this on a, on a uh, regular basis, and even if we add in, this is something else, our radar, do you have the chance for us to come down to 1750 possibly? I mean, possibly. Do we have 2160 possibly? Um, I would say that right now my level that I'd look at from a radar standpoint uh, is supported about 2421. I would love to load up on this again right at about the 2160 level. Kind of got there a couple of times over the last several days is daily. So we see that in this range right here. So workhorse is kind of interesting, but it was a really clean pattern.
that I thought was really uh, something to, to, to show you. And, and especially because of the breakout above that 15 level. And we're talking about a double here on this, and it was very easy to see a couple of different times, but more recently right there. Apple, Apple's in an ugly situation right now. Obviously, we saw that Apple was in forever, an upside bias, the long bias that went on for a very long time. Uh, any short that was happening was very, very, very uh, short, you know, a, a limited in time frame. What we saw was recently this breakdown. Now, Apple is trading up about 72 cents, not a big deal in the pre-market, a little more than half a percent. Uh, we did get that Apple had a level of interest right there. That's where exactly where it closed yesterday, right on our point of control right here. When we look at this, we also call it the cruise um, in airplane parlance. So when you look at this, this is a line that we would call, and it is possible that it will hold. Now, something I want you to recognize, when we always talk about looking left, and again, this educational, it doesn't matter the stock, it doesn't matter the time frame, they're all the same. The, you know, we're, we're looking at, it doesn't matter if we're looking at daily, 30 minute, 15 minute, or weekly, it's all the same. I use this because it's just easier to look at, and we have a lot of data that goes into the daily. So right now, we always do what? What, right gang? We look left, we always look left. Well, what's interesting here is we're looking left, and we do see that right there, there is a point of control. There's also right here, a lower level of support. Okay, let's clear all these for a second and go back this for a second. What do we else do we see? Well, we see that below the level here, we are looking at the potential for a drop down below the 100. Now, the 100 level will be a psychologically important level. So I would say that if we kind of draw this line out right from 100, uh, and that's probably a little bit high, but you'll see there's some support in that level. That's where it took off right when it went from 100 on the announcement of the split straight up and then obviously overshot a bit coming back down a little bit of a head and shoulders pattern as well here but i think more importantly it's this level of support um, i think that you really have to look at this one right here um, and we're looking at the level and if uh, by the way left click hold over something will hover and you can read all the stuff right there lift at uh, 113 the stall or the support level at 107.65 or 62. So something to keep an eye on right there, and I think that's important on Apple. Of course, we know that Apple is the largest stock in the market, and that's going to dictate direction of the market. If we look probably overlay the cues, it's not going to look much different. It looks the same, right? So there we go. All right, uh, Nicola, I think there's something interesting about this stock. So here's a pattern again. Uh, there's a lot of uh, discussion about fraud and all sorts of problems, and they roll down the truck down the hill without its own power, and it goes on and on. Hindenburg Research, Citron Research is out negative against the stock. Um, I think Muddy Waters said, you know, be careful about this. A lot of shorts in this, so you see that the opportunity for a pop is there. I will say that it's very easy, very, very easy to analyze this one. Again, just drawing some lines. Look at that. Right there, 3125. You start breaking below that 3125, all bets are off. Right now, you have a shallow recovery on this if in fact there is the knowledge that that gm stays behind their two billion dollar infusion into this company and they get things done and they actually start really showing some production and we do find out that there isn't any real fraud by the you know found by the ftc or the sec you have a great opportunity on this name and it kind of looks like an interesting level here um again you're at about 34 30 in the pre-market 31 25 approximately is your level. I would love to see that I'll uh, aileron pick up a little bit of momentum here, but you have a really good support. I think you'd probably press it down to about 3051 as well in terms of the bottom, bottom, bottom of, of all this. Uh, new IPO, um, well, not a new IPO, but a SPAC that came to the market a few days ago. Actually, see, this is a SPAC. It was sitting around the, uh, this is the warrants, by the way. The SPAC is MFS, M MF. MFAC. Uh, this was kind of a wild ride. Uh, this was a, a $10 stock for a while. It was a SPAC. They bought an interesting FinTwit company. The reason I bring this up, this is a, a Megalith uh, Financial, and I would look into this one. I think it's really interesting. The way to play this is probably through the options, uh, through the warrants, excuse me. We get 25 at price of, I think, 13 approximately. Uh, but that's an interesting play right there. Uh, it's moved on anywhere from about um, 65 cents, 70 cents recently. Uh, up to about dollar thirty. Just if you want to look at some of these spacs, they're very dangerous. Very be very careful. Herman Miller. So this is this is something that I thought we'd share. Uh, we were in a really significant sideways consolidation again. Just use the tools that you have in TradeStation. You have either your your vertical or your horizontal tool. You have the circles. You have the uh, arrows. I like to use these 
This is a, a nice area that we can see where the consolidation was. On top of that, we can see that we saw a little bit of a move to the top end that was kind of questionable, came back down, held support really well, and came out with an okay report about the home office and people buying chairs up nicely from about 25 to 34 yesterday, down slightly right now. But what you saw here was a consolidation. I always talk about this springing action. The longer that consolidation is, the longer the potential for either an upward spike that is vertically uh, vertical moves quickly through time or a downward move, either one that gets it away from that horizontal level. You know, we really don't like to trade in between. And you can see that our indicators actually were, there was a lot of gray here, a lot of gray going on until it finally broke out. You got this nice signal right here. And then you got the next day. You would have got in two days ago before the um, numbers. Um, play. Plays up 10.5% uh, before the market. This is David Buster's. I mean, obviously a real pandemic no-no, you know, going to play with games and people and touching and being and going and not the greatest activities that you could do. Restaurant, bar. Uh, no wonder it dropped from about 46 down to about 10. Recovered a bit. Uh, still at about 1560. But again, I want to show you something. Uh, right now, you're trading within a range that's really kind of significant. We got away from that level of support on the bottom here, right? We kind of broke through that and it broke out yesterday. It popped right back in, closed pretty much dead on our level of, uh, of, of support. If you were to draw a line right across this, just take your, your line tool and click. There you go. That's exactly where it closed yesterday. I, I'm not like knowing this beforehand it's just easy to eyeball where these levels are uh jets are something interesting to look at you know starting to break out a little bit here this is the etf uh that that invests in the airlines and obviously a lot of problems there uh, but a lot of you said that you would be traveling in airlines soon if you are thinking about it think about all the other people that are possibly doing it interesting uh jets uh kind of seeing a nice aileron move to the upside as well uh somebody asked me about ko Let's see. Uh, Coke looks interesting. Uh, you, 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 you're consolidating. They came out with a couple things. They're fighting Pepsi now with a new product. As always, they're always fighting Pepsi. Uh, but you do have this level of consolidation through here. Let me see if I can do that. There we go. Uh, 4880 to about 51 and change. Currently trading at about 5085. You obviously, you need that breakout for this thing to really start to fly. You need to really get above the 52 level, we'll call it. Uh, above our level of overall uh, resistance. And uh, then you got nothing to the left. I think the important thing to look at here is, again, when we draw some of these, you know, kind of look at this range in here. Not much going on there of significance. And, the, and always when we look from right to left, that's the area. Really should have seen a, a bit of a take uh, above this area because there's really nothing here, right? R right in that area right there. Uh, so something's holding it back. And clearly, it's the restaurant industry. It's the problems with getting back to work, et cetera. Anyway, we're going to end it right there. I want to thank everybody for joining me. We'll be here again next Friday. I want to also mention that, of course, uh, on, on Tuesdays, DH Unplugged, I, uh, I'm a host, a co-host of that podcast. We have a great guest this week in particular. I want you to listen to this. It's really important. Linda Rashke, who is an expert in trading and charting, and um, she is going to be on the Discipline Investor podcast this week. If you don't listen to the Discipline Investor podcast, a little bit different. It's not just all about trading. It has a lot of other things going on there, too. But I want you to pay attention to that because this week, Linda Rashke will be our guest. So with that, I want to thank you for joining us, and I'm going to see you again next week.